Good morning and welcome to the 2018 Nova Scotia Men's and Women's Provincial Championships here at the Dartmouth Curling Club in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. My name is Ron Marr. I'm joined with uh, Selena Thompson of the Halifax Curling Club and Selena is going to help us uh, call the game today. Sure am, Ron. Thanks for uh, the introduction and thanks for joining us. I understand this is one of your first curling game experiences. It sure is. I'm excited to uh, to learn a little bit about the game and uh, and watch uh, watch the match. Uh, today we have uh, Team Power of the Halifax Curling Club facing Team Stuart Thompson of the Dartmouth Curling Club. Uh, Selena, you probably know both of these teams quite well. Um, they're top teams in the province. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, I sure do. I, I know um, Team Thompson better. Stuart happens to be my little brother, and we've got. It's a family affair out here. We've got uh, two brothers out on the ice, and my parents just showed up to watch, so my oh. whole family's here. Hey, fantastic. That's <laughs> my mom. But, uh, yeah, so Stewart's team, they're runners-up uh, last year's provincial, so they're looking to do one uh, one game better this year. Um, team Power, I, I don't know uh, as well, but they curl out of the Halifax Curling Club, and they're kind of, um, I don't know, i call them the dark horse in this event, maybe. Um, a little underestimated compared to some of the other teams, but they certainly can play. Um, they put on a good showing yesterday afternoon in the first draw. Um, so this is the second game for all of these teams. And uh, there's eight teams in the provincials, eight men's and eight women's. And the um, we're featuring the Deloitte Tankard here this morning. And, of course, the women's is the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Uh, in that division. So they have two games under their belts. The men are getting their second game under here. Both of these teams actually lost their first game yesterday. Um, Team Powers, I think, went to nine ends against Chad Stevens. And uh, the Battle of the Brothers, Stewart versus Kendall Thompson, was yesterday afternoon, went to a last rock in the extra end. And uh, Kendall took that one. So both these teams coming in at 0-1-1. But we're going to be treated to a good game, I think, this morning um, as we start off Team Power has lost rock. The teams did uh, draw to the button during their pregame practice, and Team Power had uh, earned the right to throw the last stones. They're going to throw the yellow rocks as we see Taylor Ardeal's rock. He's lead for Team Thompson coming down. Would you like to introduce the rest of Team Thompson? Yes, Team Stuart Thompson. The lead is uh, Taylor Ardeal. Um, second is Travis Coulter. Uh, and third would be Colton Steele. The skip is obviously Stuart Thompson. Uh, Stuart uh, has curled for about 20 years, and uh, you know he's he's certainly well experienced in these events as well. Uh, certainly, as the guys uh, go to do their uh, shots, we'll talk a little bit more about them. And then Team Power throwing now, so we've got lead Scott Graham throwing his second of two stones. An interesting thing for Team Power, I'll just go through the lineup as well. Second is Greg Rayfuse. Third is Alex Rayfuse, but Alex isn't out there today. Uh, he's injured and he's sitting out the first few games. So they have a pretty good pickup uh, on this Power team. Graham Weagle, who was the runner-up. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Like, there were sort of like two runners-up, but he was the, uh, <laughs> the final runner-up there, uh, losing eventually to um, Matthew Manuel for the Junior Provincials there last week. Um, so Graham Weagle is sparing at third position, and then our fourth is Greg Power. So an interesting setup. We haven't talked uh, about strategy at all here, but with um, Team Thompson without the last rocks, they did put a center guard up, um, and then it's been a series of come arounds and taps. So now Travis Coulter uh, just removing one of the stones in the forefoot. Um, we'll see how this end progresses here. I think it's going to be largely execution. You have Team Power likely going to be able to sit two here. Um, and then uh, Team Thompson, those blue stones. Let's try and get something in a good position behind that center guard. That, that yellow stone that's at the back of the button is not in a great place for Team Power. Uh, likely is going to uh, be used as backing for another stone. So that was Greg's first stone. Um, and just rub the guard there. It's too bad. Looked like a good looking stone. They might have gotten that flop underneath, but sweepers just couldn't hold it. Rubbed on the front. So now another chance for um, 
Those blue stones to get in there in good position. So this is Travis Coulter getting ready. Travis has been curling for uh, 10 years. Uh, he's a uh, project quotation specialist at Gray Bar Canada in the electrical wholesale business. Two-time Nova Scotia provincial runner-up uh, with uh, Mark Dacey in 2012 and in 2017 with the current uh, Stuart Thompson team. Looks like he's bringing that in. Yeah, so early on in the game, um, sometimes what we see is a very clean end, but uh, Stewart trying to drive the point home um, that he likes to play with rocks in place, get that center guard up first. So we certainly do have um, rocks in play this end. And it all becomes about maneuvering. And If you're new to curling and you don't really know what, uh, what happens, then we'll give you a good explanation here. Um, at the end of the end, you want your stones to be closer to the button than the other team. So it's all jockeying for position here. Okay, in the second, Greg Rafuse has got a shot on the way. Greg is 22. He's been curling for 14 years, and uh, he's a client advisor at uh, the Royal Bank of Canada. Nice shot. Yeah, they were playing down to the one um, in the rings, but with power having hammer... It's not so bad to get rid of that front stone. It's an acceptable way to miss is to, to tick the front. Okay, we're preparing for the third for the Stuart Thompson team. Colton Steele is preparing his shot. And Colton and Stuart used to play against each other in juniors just a few years ago. And they both graduated to men's division at the same time and after a couple of years on different teams, they figured, why not team up? So they put this lineup together a couple of years ago um, with the goal being to have a young team who uh, they're excited about curling and they do a lot of spieling. There's a cash spiel circuit. Um, of course, everyone's playing here to, to earn the birth to the Briar. Um, that'll be in March in Regina, Saskatchewan at the Brant Center, March 3rd to 11th. Lots of experience here. Colton's been curling for 16 years, and you can see with that shot. Really so. nice. So you see what's important is um, anything that goes back behind the T-line is probably going to be uh, used as backing at this point. Colton just chipped that blue stone that was in front of the T right to the button. Um, that's probably not going anywhere anytime soon, so Greg's realizing that he probably should tidy some things up. And uh, that yellow stone at the back button is, is hurting them rather than helping them to score. Okay, team power shot on the way. And we have the alternate, Graham Wiggle, um, age 18, but again, well experienced. Been curling for 10 years, student at St. Mary's. And he takes out one of the lead stones. Graham's young to be playing in this uh, tankard, most Teams don't have a junior player, but uh, he's a really good thrower. Makes that shot. Team power, They at this point, they would really just like to score. I don't think they're worried too much about getting two points. Of course, you love to get two when you are uh, when you have the hammer, but in this situation, with a rock locked on the button, um, it'll be a challenge for team power to score a single, so they're just going to have to be blasting and trying to give uh, Greg a shot for the button on his last. Okay, Colton is getting ready for his uh, second throw. He is the third. What will he be trying to do here, Selena? So this is a guard. Um, a guard is anything that's out front of the rings or the house. Not in the rings, um, but still very much in play once it passes that hog line, the thick blue line at the other end. And uh, so this is just protecting the situation. And you just see... Travis uh, Coulter, oh, the second well at the end there, just sweeping it. The longer you sweep, the longer you can drag a rock, the, you get the most curl at the end. So they might have felt that that rock was not curling enough and got Travis to get on at the end just to, to keep it moving and get that last little bit of curl out of it. And you can see it did its job. It's protecting the, the shot stone that's on the button. Okay, up next uh, uh, we have Graham Wiggle. And uh, Graham looks like he's... Uh, to try and take out that, uh, that front rock. Yeah, so it was a good stone thrown from 
Colton, and uh, you can't always make the hero shots, the run back, so you just peel the single one. So Stuart will just replace it. They don't. Uh, it's not too complicated for them in this end. They have a really good positioned rock on the button, and nothing too complicated here. So takes the strategy out of it a little bit. Okay, now we have uh, Skip uh, Stuart Thompson preparing for his shot. Team Thompson dressed in the teal pants, throwing the blue stones. Talking strategy. See they're lined up to the left. Yep, so you aim at the broom. And what happens is you put a rotation on the rock. And it actually moves. As it goes down the sheet, you'll see it's, uh, it's going to get closer and closer to the center line. And for them, they'd like to uh, split the center line, protect what's in the house. But they have to keep this one moving to get any part of the center line covered. Looks like kind of the same thing happened with that stone. As you see, it doesn't quite get across the center line. Right. Um, so it's not protecting the stone on the button perfectly. Greg might have access. He might go for it right now. Um, the problem is that blue, I don't think, is ever leaving the house because there's a jam possibility. So if you hit it on the right-hand side as we're looking at it, uh, with any kind of big weight, it's probably jamming over on the side. So it'll ricochet off the yellow, go to the side. So I think he's just playing this with softer weight coming down and uh, tapping it to unlock his back yellow stone. Um, then Stewart can just guard and hopefully leave no shot for Greg, but he has to give himself something on his last. So that's the reason for the play here. Interesting. Makes sense? Sure does. Uh, Greg Bauer has been curling for 32 years, or for 12 years, he's 32 now, and he's a dentist at uh, Summit Dent Dentistry, he's an owner. Um, he's had a third place finish at the 2014 Nova Scotia Travelers Club Championship. And uh, he grew up in North Sydney. And his first shot of the tournament is on the way. And Greg's pretty excited to be playing in the Tankard. So he's one of those teams uh, or players that would have been playing in the Travelers, which is, that's actually the level, if you know what I, I've been doing, that's what I was playing at this year. We went to the National um, for that competition this year, my team. And so he'd be pretty excited to get to play in a tankard. And he's done exactly what you said would happen, uh, Selena. You said uh, you know he would aim for the right side, and because of the position of the other uh, yellow rock, he's uh, he wasn't able to really move that out of the house. Yeah, exactly. Just a little chip shot. Stewart has to be careful here, though. The guard is protecting his blue stone, but. If Greg were ever to come down and chip that blue out, he'd, he'd get three. Um, and so I think Stewart's just hitting the yellow. That's where it looks like they've got it lined up. Yeah, they were talking about a guard, but then Greg could come off his own, this yellow stone, and there's a double. So he'd, he'd remove his yellow, but he'd uh, the shooter would actually also remove the blue stone, and he'd get two. So I think the best chance to... Uh, to limit the scoring of team power for Team Thompson here is just to hit. So on Stewart's last rock here and one. One remaining for team power. So he's just hitting Coming that yellow good stone. Pace. Should be able to make the double. Yeah. Wow, what a shot. That was a good shot. You're picking up. Okay, and now we have uh, the last shot of the end. It's going to be thrown by uh, Skip Greg Power. And uh, Selena, what will he be uh, shooting for here? He's just got a score. Um, the button I th is still covered. Can he get around that lead stone? Is there enough space for him to yeah, get around Yeah, he certainly can get stone? around it. I don't know if he can move the blue stone that's shot enough. See, it's covering the pin. Um, so he's going to have to throw this as a draw, basically a draw to the button or the center of the rings. And then if the line is good and the sweepers can take it, they'll drag it. They'll actually get it to, to travel a bit further and hopefully just move that blue stone back. He just has to move it an inch, um, and then the yellow will be shot. So the way curling works, score is taken after all the rocks have been thrown. So with the last rock, we'll see where things lie after this one comes to a rest. They're waiting for the line, though. It's not curling yet. 
Okay. Crosses the line. So you see, they wanted to be close to that guard and in order to, to make sure in. that they make contact, but uh, I'm not sure if it's going to. Really close. Wow, that had to curl wow. an inch more. Great shot. So just a little bit, a uh, little bit short. Yeah, it just didn't come quite up to the uh, to hit enough of that blue stone. Really good effort uh, from Greg there. It will be a steal of one though for Team Thompson, so they'll lead one nothing. Great start for Team Thompson to uh, to s to have a steal on their first end, and uh, we'll move to the second end. And what happens there? Um, Team Power had last rock, but they didn't score, and so they keep uh, last rock. I didn't know that. I thought that the uh, the team that got the points would uh, retain the, uh, no, the hammer, so No, it's the to opposite. Speak. If you score, you give up hammer. The other team gets it in the next hand. So the last team to score, uh, the other team always has hammer. And you'll see sometimes if a team has last rock and they, uh, they don't have a chance to get two points, they only have a chance to get one point, if possible, They'll, they'll blank the end, so they'll hit and roll out so that they can retain hammer and try and get two points in a later end. Okay. It's actually better to take two instead of one often. And on the way in the second end, we have for Team Stuart Thompson, uh, Taylor Ardeals, their lead. I guess I should say hi to Lynn, Taylor's mother. I heard she's watching. <laughs> and I heard she's up at 5 a.m. in Alberta. So hi, Lynn. Good morning, Lynn. So Taylor puts that one tight. Stuart doesn't often call uh, stones into the rings until he's up by a couple points. Still has an aggressive style of play. Lots of rocks in play. And I'm learning a little bit more about this team power. They don't seem scared of rocks, but uh, they're definitely, you know, cognizant and concerned about rock positioning. And so they're calling the corner guard here. Scott Graham is uh, the lead for Team Power, and uh, he's curled for 14 years. He's a student at St. Mary's, uh, his fourth year at the Business Administration, uh, or sorry, a Bachelor in Criminology. Okay, and uh, Taylor Ardeal is on the way for his second shot. So two guards in play, and Taylor being asked to come around the stone he just threw. We're not getting a ton of curl. Um, I think what will happen as the week goes on is they also just warm up, and we'll see a little bit more as we see this rock come in. It's, it's getting better curl than there was yesterday, actually. You see... Travis just took a little spill, but I think he saved it. Didn't hit the rock. That's always the important thing. Probably more of a bruised ego than anything. Colton was making sure the stone curled before he started laughing. <laughs> I think Travis is okay. Team power. <laughs> now, uh, what are we looking at from Scott Graham on this shot, Selena? I think... Uh, they're just playing down to the stone that Taylor just, uh, I say they were playing down the stone he threw, but did he call the come around? I didn't see the call. Maybe people <laughs> watching the screen were better than, uh, than me at that. Yeah, he's playing the come around here. So now they're trying to get that last bit of curl, like I mentioned in the other end. You'll often see one sweeper, sometimes two, just try and sweep the stone to get it to go further and further in the rings and uh, get that protection. You get that last bit of curl to get behind the guard. You have two options for guarding a stone. You throw the stone in first and guard it after, or you put the guard up first and throw the stone in after. Usually you put the guard up first, which makes it more difficult to come around. But uh, in doing that, then the other team can't hit your stone. Okay, we have uh, Stuart Thompson team. Their second, Travis Coulter, has uh, got his shot on the way. So that one just wicked off the front. Didn't quite get in there. Yeah. 
But still three stones right in the center. When you don't have hammer, it's nice to kind of clog up um, the middle, that control zone it's often called, because you score at the button. Team Power is, uh, I think, going for it a little bit here. I think they're playing another come around. Okay, and this is uh, Greg Rafus uh, for Team Power. With that corner guard, uh, oh sorry, it's not a come around, he's just put replacing the corner guard. I didn't realize how far that corner guard had moved over, but it is way over on the side, so that's Greg just replacing it. So Stewart could um, be concerned about that yellow stone that's buried. He has two in pretty good position, but they're not buried, they're there for a double takeout. So Travis is being asked to come down and play on the yellow stone in the back of the rings. He's probably playing this with like a board or a hack weight just to remove it. Soft weight takeout. And same as the last. If you wick on the front, it's not the end of the world, but they really would like to move that. So they get it by the guard. And now they're just dragging to get the movement and actually uh, get good contact with the yellow. Pops Very right solid, the solid shot. Yeah, so now you see the problem for Team Power. Now there's a lot of blue stones in, in good positions. He still has that corner guard, so just uh, going to get rid of this one at the front and try and roll his shooter over, so the thrown yellow stone over to the side. Try and get something going here. Alternate Graham Wiggle is, uh, has his shot on the way. It comes in fast and heavy. I think that's still Greg. Oh, yeah, that was Greg's second stone. And gets the one on the top four foot. That's a pretty good shot. Shooter rolls over. They wanted it to stay a little closer, but uh, I think they'll take the removal of that stone on the four foot. Sometimes you'll see Stuart Peel here. Um, in this case, I think he likes the situation and is content to sit three. Doesn't feel the need to peel that corner guard. So when you say peel, Selena, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so a peel would be on any stone that you're, um, you're hitting. You want to remove the stone. So say that guard that's out front, Colton would remove that guard, and his shooter would roll away. So you don't want anything remaining. Sometimes when you hit, you, you want your shooter to stay, so you remove the other, like the last rock. They remove the yellow stone from the rings, but the shooter stayed. Um, gotcha. So appeal would be you want to lose everything. It's, gotcha. it's, it's a method. It's a big weight, too. You r can remove a lot of granite that way. But in this case, this is just a draw. We're going to draw just right into the rings. Looks pretty good. He wanted to keep this high. You don't want this too deep in the rings. Too deep, and it would give Team Power the chance to draw to it. But you see there, it's in the top of the rings. It's in the top eight foot. And you might not know this, Ron. The rings are 12 feet wide. I didn't know that. Selena. And we call them according to uh, their width. So the blue is the 12 foot. And then that the white ring is the 8 foot. The red is the 4 foot. And the center is the button. And uh, so you just say, yeah, you want it in the top 12 foot. That means you want it at the top of our screen in the blue area. Or if you want it in the 4 foot, you want it in the top of, or you say top 4 would be the, the top of the red area. And we say back for the back of the house. It's pretty straightforward. Literally calling the rings by their size is how <laughs> we do it. Okay, now we have uh, the alternate third, Graham Wiggle, tossing for Team Power. Again, Team Power is curling out of the Halifax Curling Club. And his shot is on the way. And it looks like he is uh, attempting to draw to the, uh, to the button or at least get inside of the forefoot. Oh, nice shot. Yeah, he was freezing to the top one and just wicked off, but didn't end up being uh, all that bad. Certainly gives Team Stuart Thompson a different target here. And uh, Yeah, the, the stone is open. Didn't roll buried, so Colton can hit it. Um, but for Team Power, it kind of opens up that side of the sheet. We are on the third stones, though, so we're getting late in the end. And what that means is Team Power is going to really try and preserve the ability to score. They're, the good thing for them is there are no um, guards out front. Colton Stone coming down here looks a little hot. 
He's going to remove the yellow. Shooter is going to stick around. Not great. I mean, you want to remove the yellow, but um, you see that situation. There's still the guard, and Greg's going to ask Graham to play the come around, and now there's backing. Those blue stones actually are, are not helping Team Thompson, even though they're in scoring position. Um, they're actually probably helping Team Power a little more. All right. That last shot, now you mentioned a uh, peel before. Was it a minor peel where it sort of stayed in the house but uh, didn't really stick? Uh, on that last shot of Colton's, that was just uh, he was trying to hit and stay, so it wasn't trying to peel anything out. Okay. So he probably could have and been a little better off, Hit and off, stay though. is different than hit and stick. Same. Hit and stay, hit and stick. Okay. Versus a peel would be to hit and roll out. And Graham Wiggle. This one looks pretty good. It's over curling a little bit, though. They're trying to hold the line. I think they got it. Yeah, it's a really nice shot. So you see how yellow is shot stone now. It's out counting all of those blues. It's closer to the button. Um, and it can't be removed. There's two blues that are in behind it. So really the strategy here for uh, Team uh, Stuart Thompson would be to draw to the button if they can't clear the... Uh well, they could draw to the button, but it, they probably can't bury it. They can't get it protected, and it would be available for a hit. They really are trying to not let Greg score two. And so if they, if they drew to the button and Greg hit it, he'd still get his two. So they need to come up with a way to, to get rid of that yellow stone. They might not do it on this shot, but I think what Stuart will do is throw a bit of weight down here like a heavy draw, uh, maybe tap it a little bit. He could freeze right to the yellow. It's a risky shot. So freeze would be um, you place your stone right on top of it. Almost as if they were frozen together. We are very literal in the curling world. Okay, and here is uh, Skip <laughs> Stewart Thompson. So they're waiting for this to curl. Might be a little bit heavy. I don't want to roll off that yellow. I think it does the trick. It bumps the back yellow a little bit. And if Greg tries and hits the blue, he risks losing his yellow stone as well. And even if he can remove that blue shot stone um, and keep the yellow, Stewart's actually now able to hit it out. So it's an interesting result and gives us something to think about. I think Greg can, can remove the blue and keep his yellow and uh, maybe not roll out. He can see enough of it to get past the guard. So the guard would be in the way if it were a little more to the right, but it's leaving the blue is accessible. And all this is just, again, we talk about jockeying for position and getting your stones in scoring position. Greg wants it so that his yellow stones can't be removed and he can use them to score. It's interesting the amount of defense that's played at this point in the end. Yeah. Well, especially when, I mean, team power, they're, they're yellow. There's only one stone that they have in the rings, but they do have last rock, so their, their ability to score is still good. Um, he'd be able to draw to the forefoot and score one if there were all blues, um, if he was facing all blue stones on his last. But you never like to be facing this many blue stones in the rings. The good thing is he may, um, Graham made a really good one on his last, and there is a yellow in position to, uh, to perhaps score. He's got to deal with the blue stone first. So this is a hit. Um, he'll be looking for it to curl and hit on the right side of, uh, or now it's the left side of that blue stone, and leave his yellow stone in the rings. So Greg Power on his first. They're waiting for it to curl. They're getting the curl. Now they're holding the line with the sweeping. And that's made. Keeps the shooter around. Looks like uh, the yellow that's on the side of the forefoot is still shot. So I think Stewart has the same shot as he just threw. 
and that'll cut things down. He doesn't have to remove the yellow if his stone is in a better position. So again, it's almost a defensive posture to to basically uh, stem the scoring at one versus two. It sure is. At this yep. point. It's called a force. If you can, if you do not have last rock and you um, cause the other team to only be able to score one, that's called forcing. Team, the team never likes to only score one when they have hammer. But sometimes it happens. You get forced. Okay, and here's uh, Stuart Thompson's shot on the way. The footwork of... Of yeah. The sweepers is incredible as they uh, as they move around some of the stones here. They're saying T line, but it looks a bit lighter than that. Oh, that's really too bad. They rubbed. Uh, they were going for line. They actually rubbed the yellow stone. So I think, I think that that uh, top yellow Graham or Greg's second stone is actually out counting the third blue stone. So this yellow, the side eight, is out counting the blue stone behind it. So if Greg can actually, he seems to have made the decision very quickly <laughs> to hit uh, the blue shot stone. He has to to score. But if he were to ever chip, I think if he uh, chips the back blue. Potential for two or makes, three Makes here. a double, there's a chance for three. Okay. If he just removes this Fort stone. Short shot early in the, uh, early in the match. I think if he just removes this stone, it's only one. So I think he has to make the double. Coming in with good pace. It's holding the center line. It's starting to curl a little. Oh, my, and he did get the double. He got the double, but the shooter rolls out. So it'll be a score of two, which is a very good result in that end for Team Power. They'll take the lead, two to one. Thompson Love Hammer playing three. And if you are just joining us and you don't know what you're watching and you didn't know where you got this link from to watch uh, it streamed online, we're at the 2018 Nova Scotia Men's and Women's Provincial Curling Championships. This is the De Deloitte Tankard, draw two, Thompson versus Power on Bell 5 TV one. Thank you for joining us. My name is Selena Thompson. I got Ron Marr with me asking all the questions, trying to figure out what we're doing this game. Um, I'll give you guys an update as well, and I, I didn't uh, let everyone know beforehand all the other teams that are competing. If you don't know, there's eight teams playing for one position in the Briar in Regina, Saskatchewan in March. Brent McDougall currently taking on Jamie Murphy in a tie game, one apiece. Chad Stevens taking on Kendall Thompson in... The, they're in the third end, but I only see the score after one, which was a score of one for Kendall Thompson. <laughs> there, the other feature sheet. If you click over and you want to see uh, that game going on, you can click over on Bell 5 TV 1, see how that game is going. And then on our other sheet, the last two teams, Mike Fleming and Mark Dacey. And uh, after a blank in the first, Mike Fleming took one in the second. Leads one nothing, playing three. And we're getting our third end underway here. Team Power from the Halifax Curling Club throws the lead rock and uh, try it, go right to the button on this one. Yeah, it's Different it's strategy. funny. Yeah, anything behind the T line and at the back of the button sometimes isn't your best friend because it ends up being backing for other stones. So you really like your first stone in any end. You can call a guard, or if you're calling it in the rings, ideally it's going to be between the top 12 foot and the top four foot. You don't want the, to go too deep because um, it helps the other team. Stewart will ignore that. He's asking Taylor to throw a corner guard. And so he's trying to set up for multiple points. So <laughs> often you'll see, you know, that rock is in a pretty good position, but if Stewart had just hit it, um, then we'd have an open end and he would only be able to score a single point. So you use the corner guard to try and generate offense. So kind of the opposite of what you were talking about last end with a, a more defensive play when you come down to things, trying to prevent the other team from scoring. In this case, you're trying to help your ability to score. Team Power leads Scott Graham's second shot. Team 
So just looking for the center guard here. That's a nice center guard. Now Taylor's trying to come around. Sometimes when the center guard's really good, you don't come around your corner guard. And sometimes when the first stone that was played is at the back button, you won't come around your corner guard. So Taylor's trying to freeze to that shot stone, but it needs to curl. You can see Travis and Colton working to, especially Travis, he's on the push side. Sweeping's interesting, Ron. There's a bit of, few changes over the past couple, or I say a few, one significant change the past uh, couple years is curlers discovered that sweeping can be more effective than we always used to think it was. We always used to keep the, the closer sweeper um, to be the one trying to keep it straight. So if you can imagine one sweeper is pushing in the direction of the curl and one person's pushing opposite the curl. They were finding that um, when you took off the second sweeper, see how these guys are both sweeping at the same time, but in, in opposite directions. When you took off that second sweeper, you could actually make the first sweeper more effective. It was like they were counteracting each other. So here, this is what it's called, it's directional sweeping. You see the one sweeper going at it to really try and get that curl only in the one direction. And that was like Broomgate 2015 or whatever. <laughs> there were big issues because we were discovering that the material on the bottom of the brooms matter. So you see there, Stewart's broom and Greg's in behind. There's there's now a moratorium on broom head material, which sounds crazy, but it's a thing. I'm sure. And you know. uh, there's a regulated broom head material that teams must use, and there's rules with what components go in their brooms as well um, to make sure that no one is significantly more effective than the other. So you see they all have the same color fabric on their broom heads, that's because it's a regulated material. You can throw with a different broom, but you cannot sweep with those other brooms. Because some people like to throw with the older style hair broom or corn broom. And some people use a stabilizer, which is what you see Greg throwing with. I'll show, if I remember, I'll show you when we see it. Certainly so a lot of skill involved with the sweeping. There is, yes. It's what people realize when they try to curl and they've never curled before. They think, oh, that's hard. <laughs> try and put as much pressure on the broom head as you can. So increase the, uh, the friction. So you're warming up the ice. At least we think that's how it works. You warm up the ice a little bit. It becomes a little slicker. And the rock will go further and stay straighter. Team power. We have their second uh, Greg Refuse. The shot is on the way. Yeah, and Team Power scored, um, but they're not looking in a great position. They had one stone <coughs> that was just a little heavy and ricocheted off. They are shot, but it looks pretty ominous with two blue stones in very good position at the front of the rings. So they're guarding right now. I just don't think those guards are going to be around too much longer. I think we'll see Stewart come out. And so here we're getting the, the peel that I talked about earlier. Um, might have to leave the shooter out front, but this is going to be big weight. And we're still on second stones, are we? This will be Travis Coulter. Yeah, so you'll see him fly out of the hack here. Lots of weight, little extra push after he is sliding. I'm looking to see both those yellows removed. Really nice, and look, the shooter goes too. So three for the price of one. Shot accomplished. Yeah, really, really nice shot there from Travis. And that's the second's job often. If Skip doesn't like how things are setting up or the other team uh, is starting to guard and try and protect, um, you'll see teams use those big weight abilities. And in this team, especially in the, the middle two, Travis and Colton, um, they can throw the high hard ones pretty well. You can see uh, the Skip uh, great power uh, conferring across across the ice to his uh, to his third yeah he's not in a great position right now and it, these teams are timed I don't know if you can see yet yeah, you see in the back there the stop clocks going so the top yes. right um, those are the timers so you have 38 minutes and we call it thinking time 38 minutes to play the game and when I told you that you're in for a two and a half hour commitment 
if you think about it, 40 minutes times two is 80 minutes. That's only about an hour and a half of time. So that extra hour of time is when the rock's traveling down the ice. So right now the clocks are stopped. It's only tracking the time it takes you to call the shot until your thrower starts to throw. Um, so that And those clocks are there to keep the pace of game running. They're not, you know, sometimes if you're not on a clock, you can tend to take a little longer to, to make your decisions. So they're trying to keep the pace fast and keep everything on fair playing ground for the teams. Um, so you like to, you know, with 38 minutes and 10 ends, you obviously have 3.8 minutes per end to... Uh, to play, but you tend to see teams try and bank a little bit of time early on. Um, and in this case, this is going to be, I think, a pretty pivotal end. And I think Stewart and Greg are realizing that, that uh, it looks, you know, it could go one way or the other. So Greg just threw up that guard again. But Stewart's trying to get some blues in the front of the house here. And eventually we'll see a shot that, uh, that raises something into the rings. and. Ideally, he's going to see all those yellows at the back removed and the blues stay. So he's looking to set up for a big score here. Okay, and we have Colton from Team Thompson. Colton Steele's shot is on the way. Pretty good job. He made it right in there, just wicked off. And you can see those blues aren't going anywhere anytime soon. The yellows are the vulnerable ones. At this point in the uh, end, Selena, the strategy for defense to offense seems to just switch with every shot. Yeah, Stewart's definitely playing offensive, but not calling a peel right there on the guard. The, the guard's not helping him, but he wanted another stone in there. And uh, Greg's just saying, you know what? I'm not in a great position here. I think I need to protect things. So this is, uh, it's not super defensive because he's not hitting the blue stones, but it's, uh, it's defensive in terms of trying to protect the, the situation. Alternate Graham Wiggles, the third for uh, Team Power to the Halifax Curling Club. And this one's just coming in a little heavy. Um, that's a bit of an out for Team Thompson. That sits in a position you can actually remove both those yellow stones. But uh, I don't think you have to do it now. I'd be, I'd be pretty tempted to peel that at this point. We're down to third stones, Colton's shot. He's going to play on the one in the rings. Sh Blue should sit three after this. Maybe two. But you can see how those two yellow stones by Stewart's broom can both go if there's a nose hit on the top one. It'll chip the button one backwards. And then there's going to be four blue stones in the rings and only one remaining yellow. And uh, that'll be pretty vulnerable. So if the other team gives you an out, you uh, you take it. Potentially a big in end for uh, Team Thompson. Sure is. And we'll see what Colton Steele has in mind. So this isn't big peel weight. This is just a normal weight hit. Well, the important thing, make the double and keep the shooter around. Doesn't want to roll out. Um, so it did roll out. Yeah, the shooter roll just uh, held a little straight. That's a missed opportunity there. Um, that being said, blue sits two, so it's, uh, it's still good. And I don't think either of those blue stones is going to be easy to remove. Greg has two shots left, so he's just uh, he's still got that center guard. So if he can put a yellow stone in good position, he's not looking at uh, at stealing at this point. It's not a great steal opportunity, but he can certainly try and force 
He may be trying to force Stewart to two points. I don't know if he can remove either of those blues or get something in a better position. So this is a, a cut down the points shot. They're in a little bit of trouble this end. And so we're hearing a little bit of noise. I don't know if that was Greg saying six feet less. Um, or on another sheet, we can hear some of the other teams that are out there. You can see they're lining up to play off uh, their own rock, his uh, team, uh, team power. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they are. They're actually just coming in. The broom is in the same place. If they were going to come off their own rock or if they're doing this, which is just, just a curl, laying maybe. one in there. Yeah. The lighter weight will curl more. So you can have a, rock, a broom in the same place for a hit as a draw if, you're <laughs> if the goal is different and if the speed is different. This one's moving really nicely at the That's end. Wow, fine. they actually oh, just touched in. rubbed that top stone. Turned out pretty well for them, though. I think blue still sits the two. But certainly the scoring area is tight. Stewart just, or Colton indicating there, why not play that now? That's his chance for his uh, third point. And I think using that yellow at the back is Greg's only chance to put a good one in there. Um, you can see with what Greg has done with that yellow stone at the front, it actually worked out well that it rubbed off because it's exposed now and um, he can use it to remove the blue and the top button. So those are the considerations. But I don't think Stewart can really play off the top yellow. It's, uh, you can't do anything with it. You remove your own blue. So he's going to go off the one at the back. We're in the third end. And Team uh, Power leads Team Stuart Thompson two to one. Skip Stuart Thompson's first shot is on the way. He's coming off that stone at the back, trying to get his shooter to roll toward the button. This one's hanging straight. This is where Colton's was straight, too. Like to get any roll they can, so that tiny, tiny little roll over. So Greg has the same shot now. This could be, uh, this could really shut down the end. Stewart needed a bit of a roll there. It's not an easy shot for Greg here. You can see Blue is sitting two. But if he comes off that one that Stewart just threw and can get a roll in right as there, just like as if I asked him to indicate. And I told you I would talk about the stabilizer. That's what's in Greg's hand. So a lot of players throw with um, the broom that they use to sweep. Some throw with a broom that they prefer to slide with for whatever reason. They're a different weight. They're comfortable to throw with and some people choose to throw with a stabilizer which is a different um, device it's usually wooden or in this case it's like a PVC pipe get the nice little broom head on it to clean your rock um, but what it does you can see it's the same height as the rock so for some people it really helps to have your hands when you're throwing at the same level and uh, you can see there makes for a square delivery it's only used for throwing. Does it help with your balance as well as you come through? It can, yeah. It really depends on what you're using it for. Is, oh, I see this one floating wide too. This is uh, third, the third rock in this spot that's held that wide. Colton's and then Stewart's and then Greg's. He was looking for an inside roll. So that's a miss. Uh, Stewart's looking at two, sitting two, and uh, drawing for his third point now. Tough miss for Skip Greg Power. Yeah, he was given a little bit of a gift there. It's uh, too bad. Didn't get that inside roll. It's quite straight there.
The Seward will need full four foot. He has to out count the yellow in the top four for the third point, but he already has two. Stewart doesn't take any time at all with this shot. No. I think as a skip, this is a shot I'm sure he's quite comfortable with. And it we'll is. We'll see if he can you do, you do have to be able to throw that last shot, that draw. They just have to manage this because it's a little tight by the guard, and then once it's by the guard, they got to get it by the, uh, the other yellow. They're trying to get this in for shot. Looks really good, well managed. I think that's good for three. What does it look shot. like to you? It looks like three to me as well. They're taking a look at it. Uh, and we'll kick the rocks. Yeah, I think not a lot of three. time uh, making that decision. That it is three for Team Stewart Thompson, and uh, they take the lead four to two. It's it's really been a back and forth match so far. It has been, yeah. And uh, so Greg Power will have Hammer in the fourth, down two. That end um, certainly was materializing early on, just with a couple early misses from Team Power, and they were never able to get one in a great position. Graham had a good, uh, I guess it was Greg on his first, sorry, had a really good draw, but uh, that was really just to limit the scoring. So we'll see what Team Power can do with the hammer this end. Okay, and the first shot uh, of the fourth end is going to be by uh, the lead, uh, Taylor Ardeal. Taylor was involved in the uh, 2011 Alberta Canada Winter Games uh, where they were a champion. Brings it into the uh, forfeit, actually, just to the button. So kind of a similar setup to last end. The, the button or back button is just the wrong or the opposite color. Scott Graham is uh, putting up a corner guard. Same thing as last end. To be offensive early on, you put the guards up, you don't hit the opponent's stones. And it's nice to see, um, it's fairly straight ice, um, but as things start to go throughout the week, you'll want those corner guards a little further over, wh right where that one is, that one's in a good position, because it still gives you the opportunity to draw from the outside in to the button at the end of, uh, of each end, but still is a corner guard for you. It's always tricky. Sometimes you see teams, they'll place the corner bar guard a little closer to the center line, and it really does block this draw path that Taylor's throwing right now. They didn't really want this one in the rings. Wouldn't mind that one to be out front. Um, there's this rule, Ron, called the free guard zone, or the four rock rule. And it's intended to keep guards in play. So we found um, years and years ago there was no rule like that. And a team would be up in points and the opponent would put up a guard and the team that's up in points would hit it. And you'd end up with a very, we'll call it a boring game because it was just very defensive and a lot of uh, hitting style. If you're one for one and you can hit the other team's rocks all the time, uh, you can see how that would lead to that boring style. Uh, and Not doesn't give the other strategy. team a chance. Yeah, so there's four rock rules in place that says, okay, within the first four stones of play or until the fourth stone has come to a rest, you cannot remove the opponent's guards from play. You can bump them around, but you can't remove them from play. So you, you don't see the, those peel calls, any kind of a hit on a guard early on because they're not allowed to do it. So that being said, leads don't play a ton of hits all the time. They're often playing draws and come arounds and taps. Interesting. Certainly adds to the strategy as you go through the end. This one's hanging out heavy. there. Yeah, it's a hit. They just wanted to keep the shooter around, but the shooter isn't in the rings. Just rolled out for Travis. 
So Greg's, um, they're happy with that because they're only dealing with one blue stone in the rings and it's on the button. So Greg Rayfuse playing the come around now. They're getting a chance to use the corner guard. Sweeper's saying this one's light. They're calling it a two. Um, sweepers and the skip will communicate. So the skip's calling line and the sweepers are judging how heavy it is, how far is it gonna go. And they said that was a two. A one would be near the hog line. And then two and three are deeper and deeper. And then four is actually in the top 12 foot. So that's just a communication system. They could say top 12, they could say halfway guard, but they say four or two in those cases. So would the skip call out and say, we want this to be a one or a two? Absolutely, yep. And the sweepers would, uh, depending on what they hear, they would decide you know, how hard they have to sweep by judging yeah, the speed of the rock. that's exactly how it works. So the sweepers right now are telling Stuart it's a little heavy. You can see they're not ready to sweep. They don't really want to sweep it. And it does the job all on its own. Gave the sweepers a break. Again, they don't want these ones too deep because it gives team power a chance to hit and roll and be in the rings. So they wanted that one to be short of the rings. Right, so really their strategy was to leave that outside of the 12 foot. Yeah, it's and not always all about grouping them around the button. Okay. And we have team power with their shot coming in. So a little bit of a sweep there at the end. They weren't going to get the double, but the shooter did roll to a good spot there. I think Stewart's just looking. There's a <laughs> you're going to learn all these new fancy sounding things. So Stewart's looking to see if those stones will drag. Um, so what happens is if you hit a stone that's by itself, hit it on one side, and it will actually uh, move away in the complete other side. So you hit it on the right, it flies back to the left. What happens when you have two stones together, um, it looks like if you hit them, if you're looking now, it looks like the back stone will go to the left, but actually if they're close enough together and you hit it on the left-hand side, the back stone will actually track a bit to the right. It's called Kay. dragging because it just uses friction. And... Uh, you can often get, and we'll see, because Colton's going to throw a lot of weight on this one, that the stones won't react like you might think they would. Okay, so he's playing so off powers. we're looking for the back stone to go left a bit. And that's exactly what happened. And he's really taken out the guards that... Uh yes. Importantly, the guards are gone, and the yellow stone that just made a nice little roll over uh, is uh, is out of play. And and you indicated earlier too, those stones may have been part of uh, uh, Team Power's strategy for uh, for gaining some other points and using those oh, stones to were. score yeah. later in in this end. So he so really it was a, a defensive move by Team Thompson to uh, kind of clean things up hugely. And it was a really nicely uh, played shot after a great hit and roll. Both teams are playing well. Especially this end. There's been some neat shots this end. Okay, and Graham Wiggles, uh, the third for Team Power, and his shot is underway. Yeah, and now Team Power is at the point where they're saying, well, we don't have any guards left, and they have a stone in the floor, but we're on third stone, so I think, you know, they're looking at maybe at bailing at this point. They don't have a lot going for them, so they switched from playing those guards and come arounds to just the hit. And that's what you saw. They were trying to roll behind that situation over on the right-hand side. Um, it's really, really hard to roll there. So the shot stone remains open. Stewart can ask Colton to hit it. And we might see our first blank end here. And with a blank end, would uh, team power uh, continue to have the hammer? They will, yeah. Or they would if, if they do blank the end. This one's curling, they need to hold the line, and they do, nose hit. Right. 
There seems to be a good pace to the match so far, Selena. Yeah, and a lot of that's dictated partly. I mean, teams don't want to be out here for five hours, but the, t the, uh, the clocks dictate that for the most part. Both these teams are good with time. Actually, I'm looking across the street, the sheets, and all teams um, have plenty of time. We're actually the, probably the slowest game out here. We've got two teams that play with lots of rocks in play, and it means for lots of thinking and trying to figure out angles and all that good stuff. This one's over curling as well, but they're trying to get that little flop behind. Oh, Ooh, and look at that goal. one. Did they make it so good that they rolled out? Appears that they have rolled it. Yeah. We do, when we're looking from above, Ron, you, you're, we're centered. The camera is centered right above the pin. And so when you're looking out to the sides, it is at an angle, and the way the rocks are, they're convex at the bottom, so they're... Oh, there we go. That's a yeah, good shot. Yeah, they're a little rounded, but you can see you can see how from the top looking down, we might see a little bit of the white, and it would look like it's out. Sometimes those rocks are actually in, but that one is uh, far enough that it's out. Good point. And, and he's, you actually see how it looks like it's rubbing the sideline, but it, they would remove it out of play if it was. So right. there you get the... Uh, it's just a bit of distortion from the angle. Okay, first shot for Skip Greg Power in the fourth end. And... Looks like the uh, the house is clear on this shot. It is, yeah. So Stewart's just coming into the rings. He's going to keep this stone away from those two. We'll call them guards over at the side, but uh, those would just get in the way if anything. Anyone can hit and roll behind it. So just trying to keep the play on the open side of the sheet. Greg will just hit it. He's not going to. Go for any kind of a big roll here. So Greg would be looking for a stick in this instance uh, and walk out with uh, one point for the, uh, the hammer? Yeah, well, this is his first shot, so he'll stick oh, on this one, and then Stuart will hit it, and then Greg will actually try and hit it and roll out. So he won't want to score, because scoring one is not ideal. He'd love to score two or more. We prefer to keep the hammer so you, rather than score one. You keep the hammer rather than score one. Seems crazy, doesn't it? Maybe at this point in the match, it makes good sense. Well, he's down two, so he'd love to get two. And he does. He'd stick. love to get more than two. I'm sure he'd love to get eight points because that's the maximum you could get, but it doesn't always happen. The other team usually has something to say about that. But you, you've probably heard of that, an eight ender. I don't think you hear of that too often. <laughs> if you can score an eight ender in curling, it's pretty cool. Not everybody does it. I was following your matches uh, back in uh, November, and uh, you were part of a few uh, few ends where there was four or five, I think, scored, yep, which was which again. Happens. <laughs> I, I can imagine that would be a. Uh, Devastating if you're we, on the wrong end did, of it. We did really, really, really well. We didn't have any big ends. We didn't give up any big ends until we were in the bronze medal game, and then we gave up a five. <laughs> Look at this. Stewart's trying to Stewart's trying to make the roll. So he's trying to make it. That's a really good shot. He's trying to make it as hard as possible uh, for for Greg to blank. Um, and you can see there that blue is buried. That was really, really good. So for Greg to try and um, to blank this end, he's going to have to remove that blue stone, and I don't know how he does it. I think he's just going to have to draw for a single. And so when we said this is going to probably be a blank end, that was a really good roll, and now Greg says, oh, well, good job. I'm drawing for one. So he's getting forced. And Stewart really wanted to force him oh, yeah. with that yeah. shot. You can see he seems pretty pleased with that shot. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't show a ton of emotion out on the ice. Most of these guys are pretty cool-headed. They'll get uh, yell a lot when they want the sweeping and be pretty calm otherwise. Adrenaline does a lot. It's always interesting. You see the first couple ends of a game, or especially the first draw of uh, a tournament like this as the teams just are trying to settle. Because it's exciting. You're in your provincial championships, and uh, you want to do well. And sometimes that adrenaline just causes you to kick out a little too hard, or there's lots of things that can happen. So. There's a lot to be said for pre-shot routines and calming your nerves. And 
Greg's done a good job of that here. This looks like a great draw for a single point. He'll bring it right to the forefoot and probably bite, nibble the button there, almost. The top four foot's good enough for a single. But they'll trail four to three. As we go to five here in the Thompson Power game. At year 2018, Deloitte Tankard at the Dartmouth Curling Club. Thanks for joining us. We're on Bell 5 TV 1. And uh, if you are following a team in the Tankard, the Deloitte Tankard or the Scotties Tournament of Hearts, you can find all the live scores on nscurl.com. There's a link to the stream if you ever happen to lose this link. We've got two games broadcast throughout the round robin for both tournaments. So that's sheet C and D. So if you're on nscurl.com looking at scores and you're wondering if your favorite team is broadcast, if they're on sheet C or D, they will be. Just click through to the link and you'll be able to check it out. Kendall Thompson scored one in the third on Chad Stevens, so they lead two to one. They're playing five, so we'll see what the fourth end happened. Uh, Jamie Murphy got two on Brent McDougall in the fourth, so he leads Brent three to two. And Mark Dacey stole a single in the fourth against Mike Fleming, leads three to one in that game. Okay, and Team Powers uh, first shot with uh, Scott Graham. It's just outside of the, uh, the 12 foot and uh, Team Power, by the way, uh, has qualified for the uh, championships uh, at the Greenwood qualifier earlier this season. Yeah, there's two ways to qualify for provincials. Um, and uh, the first, the two teams, it was this team, Thompson and Jamie Murphy, uh, they qualified by virtue of their CTRS, so that's the Canadian team ranking system. I think that's what the initials are for. Um, so when you play in tournaments, uh, uh, bond spiels, you get points based on how you place. So those were the top two teams in Nova Scotia for points. They qualified, didn't have to play in a qualifying event. The rest of them went to Greenwood. So the remaining six teams all qualified by winning their respective games in that event. Okay, team power, uh, Scott Graham, the lead. His second shot is underway. A little freeze made there. It's a nice series of shots coming up here. Taylor trying to put a second one in. Team Thompson's up one with ha with hammer. And uh, so they didn't really want to play a guard. Team Power put up the center guard. And so now those series of come rounds. Taylor was a little deep on his first. And Scott froze to it. Uh, and then Taylor did it better on his second one there. Top button. So Team Power's trying to shut down the scoring area. Early in the end, you try and get your rocks in good position. And, uh, and then we'll see eventually depending on how this shot ends up whether Travis will peel the front or they'll keep coming around this one looks a little heavy they don't want to rub off the blue they don't want to rub off anything really but uh, end up doing so so that one being deep um, I think if it were in a good position and Stewart felt like the end was in jeopardy and they might not be able to score. He would call the peel. But in this case, that one went a little deep and kind of opened up the back forefoot. So Travis is being asked to play the come around again. This is a pretty aggressive call. When you're talking about being aggressive or, or defensive or offensive, this is 
certainly uh, trying to get stones in, in good position early in the end and, and play the heavyweight ones later. So they're sweeping for line here and for weight just to get it. They want to lock this right on the top of that blue stone. Really nice shot from Travis. Great shot. I just caught Graham Weagle in a little eye roll. <laughs> they know that uh, they're in it again this end. And just a ever so slight a miss on that yellow stone. If that was four feet lighter, the shot would have been made. Uh, it's, they don't call it the game of inches for nothing. Okay, team power. Greg Rafus, his shot on the way. Team Power doesn't have hammer. They're happy with that center guard out front. So now this shot uh, is a nice little freeze, and that's really well done also. hard to get a good when with Travis's shot the blue stone locking right on the top of his own it's hard to uh, hard to do anything that'll end up better um, so team power just needs yellow stones in there at this point ones that won't be able to be removed the forefoot appears very busy at this time <laughs> of the end that's a really good uh, Good thing to note. So that's that's the goal of Team Power. That's what they're trying to do is clog up that forefoot. And uh, they know that guard's not going to be there forever. You can see it, or I can see it on, we're in the club, and I can see it on the screen that I'm looking at, but we can't see it right now. There it comes into view. That center guard won't be there forever. They're waiting for the line on this one. It's a bit wide. They wanted this one to cross the face of the yellow stone. Since it's not going to, they'll sweep it to try and uh, rub off the yellow. This point of the end, uh, Team uh, Thompson has four, four, all four of their rocks uh, in, in play inside the eight foot and two inside the four foot. They do, and, and that's an, uh, your hint that they've been putting, with the exception of that last stone, they've been putting rocks in, in good places this end. Um, normally the team without hammer will would love to hit some of the blue stones but you can see there it's, it's going to be hard to remove any of the blue stones the only one that's accessible is the one by Greg's broom there so I think they'll be hitting that and uh, trying to roll the shooter toward the center line maybe bump those two blues around a little bit if they can okay and Graham Wiggle but they have to hit the inside, the center line side of this. I think if they hit on the outside, it's uh, just making their situation worse. Looks like it'll curl up to the inside. That's a good shot. Now those yellows are in much better position than they were before. may see the peel now it's uh the blues are a little vulnerable i think the center blue isn't going anywhere so we're just looking at you always are looking at you know what can work for you and and you're also worried about if i miss this shot how can i miss it that's okay so hitting you know the outside of that yellow stone would probably punch the blues out to the side but it's really good if you get the inside of the yellow stone. He's trying to keep blue stones in the front of the rings. So, th so the shot store is indicating would be a great shot. It's just hard because there's that center guard in place. So you're going to have to play this with down weight, probably like a board weight. Board, board would be so that it goes through the rings and hits the boards at the back. Okay. Literally board. <laughs> we call it hack if it goes to the... Uh, the hacks that you kick out of. You'd call it back line if it would only go to the back line. You call it T line if it would go to the T line. 
And down weight uh, just refers to any of any yeah, of those like, weights. Yeah, like like a softer weight. Normally, you hit. You've got this. We call it normal weight, which would um, very effectively remove a couple stones from play. And anything less than that is what I would call down weight, like a control weight or board or something like that. Down weight, but board distance. Yes, you got it. So they're waiting for this one to curl. They'd love to get to the inside of the yellow stone. It's curling now. So it came up to nose. Not that bad. They wanted to get a bit more on the inside and punch the yellow back more. Blue only sits one. If, uh, if that blue stone at the top eight foot the Colton just threw is hit. Uh, I think the shooter goes, but you'd remove one of the blue from the forefoot. So the thing is, you're removing a blue from the forefoot that's that's not shot. Um, but Greg's really aware that those yellows at the back are likely not going to stick around. Okay, and Wiggle the third, Graham Wiggle. He is the youngest competitor in this match at 18 years. And he's coming in as a uh, as an alternate to a. Uh, Pretty challenging position as a third here. Sure is. Third position is the setup position for your skip. So you're trying to leave them with a good shot. So we'll watch. They're playing this shot I indicated. So that blue is gone. And you see there's a lot more yellows now. So they've been maneuvering this end pretty well. There's only one blue in good scoring position now. And it's uh, it might not be there forever. Certainly appears to accomplish a lot with that shot. Yeah, it did. They've really turned things around with a couple nice uh, shots this end. I bet Stuart wishes he'd peel that guard now. Skip Stuart Thompson taking a close look at his options. So their goal here. I mean, obviously to score, but they'd like to score a couple and increase their lead. See him talking to his third, uh, Colton Steele. Yeah, and it's Colton's shot still, so they're just deciding what would be the best uh, result here. And I honestly, there's not a ton of options. They continue to leave that center guard, which is probably helping them at this point. Um, Colton's just playing into this pocket. I think he's trying to freeze his blue stone onto the back yellow, so almost beside his own rock. If you can get another blue in there, uh, and maybe use it to remove the yellows later. The yellows don't have to be removed to score, um, but they're backing for the blue stones. So this one should be T-line. That's what they're trying to have. Needs to curl. It's going to be real close. Trying to curl up to the nose of that yellow stone. So they got right to it. I don't think there's a way to remove both of those blue stones. And blue sits too right now. Great shot. It, it appeared to be... Uh, defensive but also uh, an <laughs> offensive move at the same time. It's like all curling shots. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I always joke, I say, you're kind of trying to like get points and like screw your opponent over all at the same time. Uh, so when you say it's like defensive and offensive, it kind of is every shot is played that way. It's how can I advance my position and, and uh, hurt the other team's position. And I think you're starting to figure out why people like curling so much. Okay, and we have the skip. Greg Power preparing. Again, uh, Stuart Thompson does have the hammer at this end. And uh, power shot. See them lining up on the outside. Yeah, uh, they're playing 
a soft hit weight, so when I set a, a down weight, onto the stone that Colton just threw and trying to leave this yellow stone in the front of the forefoot. It doesn't have a lot of room to get in there, but this one looks pretty good. Just trying to tap the blue back onto the yellow. It's really close. Nice shot, wow. He's not scared to make the big shots. So you can see now there's a blue stone at the back forefoot. There's a blue stone that's shot. And then there's two yellow stones in really nice positions at the front of the forefoot. And you can see how it's queued up. The rock Greg just threw the yellow stone that's just touching the blue shot stone. And it's uh, available. It's not behind the guard fully. So that's available for a little tap. Um, so if, if it were yellow's shot right now, blue didn't have a say, Greg would just hit that and sit one in very good position. So right now, Team Thompson's looking at how do we maneuver these stones and give us ourselves a chance to score multiple points. They're talking about coming off the side yellow into this middle situation which could be good. Um, you're probably gonna remove your own blue stone, but uh, the idea is they're leaving themselves something for their last. And again. And they're gonna call a timeout here. They're just trying to save time. You have 38 minutes to play the game and they're at, uh, they're trying to call a timeout, but it's been about 15 seconds and their timer doesn't see it. There we go. So they should, the officials to see that, hopefully they'll put a few seconds back on the clock. But uh, there's 38 minutes to play and I was saying time doesn't always become an issue, but they have 18 minutes to play the last five ends, which is less than half. So that's why they're calling this timeout. How many timeouts uh, does each team get in a match? Two per 10 ends and they're 90 seconds each. So right now, Team Thompson has 90 seconds, and their fifth, Bill McPhee, who was? Oh, he's not even going out. <laughs> I said he was sitting beside you, Ron, but uh, I'm watching. He's gone down. So he's uh, their, their fifth man. He'll play if anyone's injured or same ideal idea as Team Powerhouse. They have a five-man rotation for this event. You can swap out at the beginning of a game or if someone needs to come off during a game but you can't do it multiple times so they're just talking about what their what's their best option here uh, they need to score they don't want to give up a steal and be tied so they're sitting one now a guard would be a crazy thing to do because if greg ever were to sit one or two then you don't have a way to score so they're going to play into the rings but they're just trying to decide what's the best result and how can we get it they're they're talking about playing off that outside one and i see so many ways that it can go wrong that i uh i just find that a hard shot but it's certainly an aggressive call to try and bring another blue into that forefoot area and again with the power or sorry with the hammer um team thompson is is not necessarily satisfied with one at this point they're no. trying to I mean, they'll take one. They're, they know they're at risk of not even getting one at this point with Greg's nice shot there. They keep coming back to this shot. I don't know that there's a lot else to... I don't even think they need to, uh, to roll the shooter in and hit anything. I think they just roll the shooter into the top eight-foot area. And... By doing this, it's, it's funny, we keep talking about the defensive offensive. One of the ways that Greg Power can get at the situation is by doing this exact shot. So by removing this side stone and uh, redirecting the shooter in, he's taking away a shot for the other team. So trying to roll the shooter, I think, just into the top house area. I don't think they're trying to move anything else. But I could be wrong. Comes in with obvious like board gonna, weight. Just going to nose. Well, that's more than board. That would have been normal weight. Would have It would have hit the boards, but gone well past them, if given the opportunity. If the boards weren't there, yeah, it would have gone a lot further. Yeah. 
So what did that shot accomplish, uh, Selena? Well, it didn't do what they wanted, which was to redirect the shooter, that blue stone, into the forefoot area. They were trying to roll off, and he just hit it on the nose. So it, I guess the best description is it didn't accomplish much. Um, Has he left any openings here for, uh, well, Greg, for Skip Greg Power? Greg always had the chance, I kind of mentioned on his last shot, that he can come play down to his yellow stone that's just touching the shot stone, roll the shooter off, and push the blue that's shot out the back of the forefoot to sit one. The only thing is if you don't make that perfectly, you might leave a shot for a couple for Stewart. So and then Stewart would gonna also <laughs> have the draw as <laughs> well. They're going to call the timeout too. Team Power with their first timeout. It seems to be a pivotal point in the uh, in the match, at least uh, so far. It is, yeah. An interesting end for sure. Yeah, and it's uh, they've both teams have used up a lot of time this end, and it's important. Team Power's down one without. They can't really afford to give up, you know, more than one or two points. Um, and then Team Thompson would really like to get one or two points. So they're and both teams see opportunities to kind of accomplish their goal or, or maybe flounder a little bit. So they're trying hard. It's uh, it's always hard, though. The more you think about things, I find the more you just get confused. But timeouts certainly can uh, can help. So team power just discussing. I think a good option for them is just to lay another one in there. They can give up a single point and, uh, and be okay. They could just guard. The, sh the second shot stone, which is the yellow. I you don't know that the that's a bad option. Sorry, go ahead. Well, you mentioned also in the introduction that both teams are at, uh, are both teams at 0-1? 0-1, they both so lost their first matches yesterday. So there's also the added pressure that they don't want to go to 0-2 and, and potentially oh, exactly. uh, yeah. you know, have an uphill battle the rest of the tournament to advance. Yeah. So what happens is it's a seven game round robin. There's eight teams. You play every other team once uh, between, well, yesterday and Friday. Um, and so it's, you know, a long week. Uh, top three records advance. The top record goes to the final and two and three play off. So three losses is about all you can handle. And your first two are losses, just like you said. Two should be good. Three is usually the maybe. So I think Greg's playing the tap that I indicated earlier. This one's really curling. They don't want to be on their uh, their top yellow. They want to be on the the second shot yellow. It's really really close it's here. It's going to be close. So they just rubbed. I think blue's still shot though. It appears from our overhead that blue is still shot, but uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know our our angles are a little bit distorted. It's hard to tell. If blue shot, I mean, Stewart can try and get the second point on this side. That's not easy. And you do risk bumping your own. Selena, you as a skip, what shot would you call on this one yourself? <laughs> uh, this is, away. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it just seems to be a, a pivotal, pivotal time in the match. And they're, they're short on time. Like, they know that they need to be at, you know, three minutes more so you can see a little bit of panic a little rush they're they're halfway through the game so it's not like their clock ends now but uh they, they did use a lot of time so just throwing the draw you don't like to feel rushed as a skip throwing your last shot skip appears to be very decisive though and uh, i think when you're running out of time somebody does have to step up and say no this is what we're going to do and yeah it's usually the front end that's reminding the back end oh we're we need to get going here, guys. He's drawing it into so the house. So trying for the second point here. Got to get it by the top yellow. And did ricochet off his own, but I think it's still good for the point. I think it's just the one, though. So all that for a single. 
really, really close to a second. They just rubbed the top. So Interesting end, though. It looked like great defense by uh, Team Power as well. Well, they, they had to make some good shots there. They were getting in trouble. So, yeah, a single point for Stewart. They'll take a 5-3 lead after five. We're going to go to a break here on Bell 5 TV 1, and we will catch you back here at the Dartmouth Curling Club in five minutes.
the side. It was curl. It was curl. Yeah, I ha I actually it's, scan. It's Yeah, that's what I'll send you when I have it. I know Selena's, Selena's uh, this is, she was telling me this is going to be uh, part of Oh, yes, so a list of upgrades. Yes, 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 I'll do that. Yes, that would be great. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, awesome. Great, thanks a lot. We'll do it. Thanks. See you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's be the same at the beginning of golf. Yeah. 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 Like, you know, I can easily tell them to do it. I don't feel competitive at all, but I think it's Good morning again, folks. We are back at our, at the 2018 Deloitte Tankard here at the Dartmouth Curling Club, the Men's Provincial Curling Championships for Nova Scotia. Winner goes on to represent Nova Scotia at the Briar in Regina, Saskatchewan in March, early March at the Brant Center. Okay. My dates, what are my dates? Third to 11. I'm Selena Thompson, joined by Ron Meyer. He's my business colleague. We do real estate together and uh, apparently I convinced him to, <laughs> to commentate on curling with me. Thanks for joining us, Ron. Hope you're having fun so far. It's a lot of fun and uh, you know, very interesting game. Uh, I've curled just a little bit and certainly uh, it's been a number of years, but to see the strategy involved and the skill level here is, is incredible. Uh, I'm really impressed with the shot execution so far and uh, looking forward to the uh, last five ends. Yeah, so we have Team Stuart Thompson and Team Greg Power. Stuart leads 5-3 to three after 5 ends. Greg Power has Hammer here in the 6th. So we're down to a 5-end game. And we did talk about this before the break a little bit. But these two teams both short on time. Stuart's uh, got just under 2 minutes less. But they're at the 16 and 17 minute mark out of 38. Just starting the 6th end. And all the other teams have the same amount of time on their shot clocks. Except they're finished the sixth end, so we're about an end behind. But that's okay. They'll uh, they'll make their decisions quick. They would have talked about that at the break. We're happy to have everybody joining us on here on Bell Five TV One. But if you'd like to come out and watch, we're at the Dartmouth Curling Club. That's on Canal Street, downtown Dartmouth. It's off of Portland. And uh, single entry, it's five dollars. And you can get a pass that gets you all the way through to the playoffs and the finals for $30. And if you're just uh, a new, new to curling or never watched or know anything, we're answering questions and giving a little bit of info, hopefully to keep everybody well informed. And if you want to try curling, you can contact any club. They'd be happy to show you exactly how to play this fun, interesting, complicated game. At the end of the day, it's a simple game. Score the most points, <laughs> just like any other game. But how you get there is a little different. So Team Thompson here, they were trying to get by that guard and get the shot stone. They actually wrecked on the front. And that blue stone spills out the back. They still have a shot stone in the top eight foot and a guard and a rock out front. But... Uh, yeah, they just, sweepers didn't seem to want to sweep that one, and they actually wrecked on the front, or maybe it was a missed line call there. I thought Stewart was calling sweeping, and they were a little hesitant because it was heavy. So we got Greg Power here. Sorry, Greg Rayfuse. There's two Gregs, and it's Scott Graham is the lead, and then and then Graham Weagle. Like, it's uh, they shouldn't be allowed. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's making me screw up their names. Greg Rayfus uh, shot. It's taking out that front lead. And uh, Selena, what's your thoughts on that shot? Well, they want to open up the front to be able to score, and that actually accomplished a lot. They uh, opened up the front. They now have shot stone. Didn't remove the second blue stone, 
and the shooter didn't stick around in a great position. Uh, you can see it rolled over to the side of the sheet and is almost at the edge. So Travis can now hit uh, the shot stone. This one's curling a lot. Sweepers are on it. They're on it to get it by the guard, but they're probably on it to even hit the stone at all. Going to be rolling out here. So I think we'll see. Oh, it's hard because the guard's so far out to the side. It got ticked. I think we'll see Greg try and go around, maybe make a go at it here a little bit. Very different end so far compared to the last few ends where there's been a lot of uh, activity inside of the house. Um, now it just seems to be fairly clear at this point. Yeah, and especially when things are clogged up on the center line, that usually favors the team without hammer. Um, so this is certainly a, a better setup for scoring a couple points for team power. It almost seems like the pace is, uh, pace is improved because of their, their time standing in that uh, perhaps they're, they're playing a, you know, a, a quicker end. Yeah, they do have to both. It's, um, sometimes it's hard when one team is crunched for time and the other isn't. These guys are both a little short on time. Team Power has more time than Team Thompson. So they have a little bit of the luxury of more time, but they're, they're still behind. So and this one coming up a little light. Sweepers can't quite get it to the rings. It's always uh, unfortunate when, if that were in the center of the sheet, it would have been in the rings, but it's a circle and you curl away from the, the center and ends up not being in. The location of the yellow stones on this end, or the yellow rocks on this end, uh, uh, are they likely to provide any bearing on this? Uh, well, they are corner guards. Scoring? They're they're far over to the side, which means that it's hard to make a good come around and, and be protected behind them. It just makes a degree of difficulty higher. But uh, Team Thompson is going to try and direct the play away from that area. So you're correct that, yeah, it would be helpful to use, but uh, they'd love that stone to stick around, the blue. They've removed the yellow, but it doesn't do much for them. They would have really liked to keep that blue stone in the rings. Again, it's a few have more stones in the rings, and your opponent uh, doesn't have theirs in good positions. It makes it harder for them to score. Okay, and we have the uh, team power third, Graham Wiggle, who we mentioned is uh, the youngest competitor uh, in the match at, at 18, and he's uh, uh, sitting in for uh, for Alex Rafus, who is uh, has an injury uh, at this point. So trying this come around again. See if Graham can make it better better than Greg. They're running out of rings again. It is really hard to get these buried, so really nice shot. It's not shot stone, but it never was going to be to be behind the guard. And we'll see if there's anything visible for Colton. So you can see a piece of it. Colton will just play. Here's the down weight we talked about before. This one is wide. It needs to curl to make contact with the Yellowstone. Concentration of the sweepers there. They're letting it go, but you can just see how closely they're watching. So Colton just made, uh, just wicked the side of it, actually made it buried more. It's going to be harder to remove. So really good chance for Team Power to get a couple here. Team Power does have the hammer. You can see the Yellowstone just briefly there, Colton wicked. They were trying to remove it, didn't have to hit much more, but you can see it over the left side. It's totally buried now. So instead of forcing by sitting two, Team Thompson is going to have to force by having a stone in a really good position. They're working on this one. Greg Rafe, you sweeping. They want to uh, keep the shooter over on that side of the rings, keep the two yellow stones stick. far away. Oh 
see from our overhead, they seem to be uh, moving the location of the back blue stone. Is, um, it looked like it was out and then moved back in. Can you speak to that, Selena? Yeah, it looks like... I'm not sure. They're just talking about maybe a burnt stone or... A Greg indicated something. Maybe he touched it when he was sweeping. I'm not sure. No. It looked like it had enough uh, to remove the blue stones. I'm not sure why. Yeah, you can see him now yeah, repositioning I think someone, it a little bit. I think someone hit it with their foot, but they weren't sure where. And it does, it actually does make a difference. Um, because that yellow stone's over on the other side, they're not sure if it would have gone out or, or not, or out further. So they're just going to leave it there. The interesting thing about curling is you do your best to put it back. Is there a referee at this point that would sit down and clarify, you know, where it should be? Uh, or I yeah, can see well, somebody... So no one keeps track, like, at national competitions, there's someone that keeps track with a little magnetic board in behind, but um, and it's always approximate. You try and put it back where it was. Um, so they do have the official out there now, and they're having a discussion about what happened. I didn't see... Yeah, it, appeared, uh, it appeared to be outside of the blue ring initially, and I, I couldn't see if it was bumped out, but then uh, it appeared that Colton uh, Steele uh, you know, just seemed to edge it back in, and I wasn't sure why that was. Perhaps it had been touched, but it looks like, uh, it looks like they have something now. Now, this obviously uh, doesn't chew into their, their time. Uh, I can see no, the well, uh, they're talking shots now, so their time clock will start running. That's it was right. an official timeout just to have a discussion about what happened. I thought the rock leg was going out, but it must have been a little down weight. It didn't go out, but someone probably hit it with their foot. And, and then, of course, you don't know, oh, where would it have gone? And that's where you try and put it back. So the non-offending team puts it back. And the official would, uh, you know, and basically just make, sh make sure everything is okay. Yep. Yeah, clarify between the teams that it's, a, it's an okay position. So in this case, they're trying to remove the yellow stone and not jam it on the back one. So that back stone issue is going to be a moot point now because it's out of play. So for Greg here, hit this, stick around. Stewart's going to have to make a good shot or Greg will get two. It's been a well played end from them. They capitalize on a miss. I think both teams banked a little bit of time this end. And to be clear, they do have enough time to, both teams have enough time to play, they just can't take extra time. You can see that could be a factor as we get to the uh, to the end of the match. Sure is. There's a lot of discussion that happens with, you know, what will happen? What will this path do? What is the weight here? What do I, you know, what do you think is going to happen? What's the best call? There's so much to talk about. So you pick your battles. Kept the shooter around, so that's a good result. Stuart's so going to have to try and make a big roll over to the other side. If he's not shot after this, Greg will have an open draw for two. So they'll play this as long. They have to hit the sh this uh, the stone. They can't hit the other one. It's buried. But in hitting this stone, they'll play the uh, sweep call pretty aggressive and try and make a big roll over to the other side. Skip Stewart's Thompson with his shot on the way. Comes in with uh, some significant weight. And he knocks it out in sticks and didn't, an didn't get any roll, so it's just a draw for two here for Greg Power. So they bounce back here. Only ended up giving up a single in the last end. Wasn't looking good part way through, but they really pulled it up in the, the last end. And now a chance to score two and tie things up here after the sixth end.
skip Greg Power for two. So just needs any part of the paint for two points here. Sweepers are, you like to see them when they're cleaning it. You don't want to see them back away from the rock because it means it's probably through. And uh, you don't want to see them pounding it out of the skip's hand because that means it's probably light. But that one will go right to the forefoot for two points. So tie game here after six ends at the 2018 Deloitte Tankard here on Bell 5 TV 1. Okay, we're going to move to the seventh end. And again, both teams a little bit behind on their time. Although, uh, as Selena mentioned, they did pick up a little bit of time in that last end. Uh, what here is your make on the time that's left available now, Selena? In a normal match, is this, is this a, enough time for these guys to be able to confer with each other? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's enough. It doesn't take a lot of time to call a shot. And, and what they'll be doing is more than ever, you know, as the other team is throwing... The next team will be getting ready in the hack, getting the rock prepared. You clean the bottom of your rock to make sure there's no debris on it um, and uh, trying to save as much time that way because it really doesn't take that much time to call a shot. And then, of course, the clock stops when uh, the rock crosses the T-line as the thrower is delivering. So, you know, team power hasn't used up any this end. You'd like to have, this is the seventh, you'd like to have uh, for four ends remaining about 16 minutes and they have 13 and a half and 14 and almost 15 uh, Thompson and Power respectively. Um, so that's a little less than, than you'd want, but you know, truly you need about three, three and a half minutes to play an end. So um, they're, they're still okay as long as they have 12 minutes, but uh, that means four quick ends and we know there's gonna be a few rocks in play. Both teams do have significant uh, experience, though. Every player has got over 10 years, and most of the uh, most of the players are in their 20s. And uh, again, you know, 14, 15 years of experience. So they've all experienced. Uh, uh, they're experienced players, and I, I think uh, uh, I think time may come into factor where their teams are both 0 and 1 in the tournament. And uh, you know, I think this is a must-win for them at this point of the tournament. They don't want to go down 0-2, so there should be some drama here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Some good shots to come, too. the top four foot rock put in place. And that's Scott Graham, corner guard from Taylor Ideal, whose mother is watching. Hi, Lynn. You get one shout out every uh, five ends. <laughs> no, she's always watching and commenting. Big supporter, can't be here all the time. Taylor's from Okotoks, or as he said in his bio, how does, it's backwards, just Skotoko, I guess is how they pronounce it. I think that's an inside joke, or I don't know. Do people from Okotoks just call it Skotoko? Either way, it sounds funny. So she's watching and cheering there, and I'm sure uh, a lot of the players that are on the sheet right now have family and friends watching. I know uh, only because I'm particularly biased. <laughs> I've watched a lot of Team Thompson games. Our whole family's here today. And Team Power out of the Halifax Curling Club would have friends and family around too. Club members cheering them on. Halifax Curling Club uh, had the roof collapse a few years ago and had the ice shed rebuilt, new ice plant, and a lot of teams are enjoying playing there lately. And this Team Power is one of them. Very great view springs that just to the edge of the eight foot. Yeah, it's a nice setup for Team Power here in the seventh end. They're really turning on the heat. And again, Thompson does have the hammer here, but uh, you can see Power starting to uh, position himself to uh, to limit uh, 
Thompson from scoring. This one, uh, the sweep call tra from Travis Coulter. Getting Taylor to sweep it. They gotta get by that guard out front. Sweep him really hard to get it by, and he does. Shooter will stick around in the front of the rings. That's a nice little shot there. Well done. So that's what we call that soft weight. Doesn't quite punch the yellow out the back. They would have loved to get that one out the back, but uh, when we talk about that control zone, the front of the rings, that's where that blue stone is sitting. Second shot. They just don't have the luxury of having a lot of time to think because maybe it's a little more obvious for uh, Greg who's sitting in the hack, the, the time clock counting down at 14 minutes. This is, it's getting exciting with the time clocks. They don't always come into play. Greg Rafuse, the second for Team Power. The shot is underway. They're just trying to bring this one, the tight guard. Actually only ends up halfway. They would have liked to bring it a little closer, but the, they would have ruined the line, so just left it where it is. It's a good shot, though. So to clean up the front, double peel here from Travis. Coulter. Travis's wife, Julia, is also playing. She's on the... Obviously, in the Scotty's side of things, well, she's uh, lead for Team McDermott. Travis made that peel so well he didn't actually catch the second one. So didn't make the shot that was called, just a little too thin on the top one. another guard here from Team Power. The skip taps his broom. He points a location and he taps. Is that just, uh, is there some communication with that tap? Yep, the tap is where you want it to end up. And so the, when the broom's held vertical, that's where you aim. And with the rotation put on the rock causes a curl as it travels down the ice and it will end up. Now oftentimes the skip is too lazy to walk up to, <laughs> to the guard zone or they're trying to conserve time and uh, they'll tap in the house where they want it to be guarded. So say I want a guard in the one zone but I want it to protect the button or the side forefoot. So that's usually if there's a tap in the rings and then an indication for a rock out front, that's just where they want it. So see how Stewart's tapping with his broom? He's saying, here's where I want you to hit the rock, and then now it's here's where I want you to aim. So this is another um, double peel attempt, trying to remove both yellow guards and lose the shooter. Golden steel. He's throwing the heat on this one. Looks good. So you see there, he hit, and it really does matter which one you hit first. Um, you hit the one that's higher because, of course, the momentum going forward um, it'll ricochet off and then hit a lower stone. So made that shot perfectly. We have a measure over on sheet B. That's the Stevens-Thompson game, the tie game. And I don't know if they can uh, measure it. They put the laser in. It's actually really interesting to see. If you can't tell which rock is closer than the other, uh, you put a measure on it, but it looks like they're, they've got a laser and they can't actually fit it in to, to see because the stones are so close to the pin, which is the absolute center of the ring. So the, the, uh, the official can try and make a decision with the teams. Um, if you can't measure, then you try... I think what they'll do is they try and agree, and if you really can't tell, then it's, there's no score. 
So a guard put back up by Team Power. We'll keep you updated there. It is a tie game, so it does matter who scored in seven in the Stevens-Thompson game. Wiggle with another guard on his last shot for Team Power. Now we have Colton Steele, the third for Team Stewart Thompson. Another soft weight tap shot here. Looks really good coming in. That guard's high. They can uh, get around it. So that punches the Yellowstone right to the button, but you can see things building up here. If you are to uh, make a play on that top blue, you can see that the button yellow might not stick around forever. No one seems to be able to come to a decision on uh, sheet C with which stone is shot. I think if you can't tell, they will call it a blank end. They're at a crucial point in that match. So they are. They just kicked the, the stones away. The third for Team Stevens. Cameron McKenzie kicked the stones away. So they probably came to a decision, and it's likely a blank. It was a blank or a steal of one because Team Thompson scored last and they're throwing first. So if it was a blank, they would continue to score first or if they stole one. So I think they probably decided on a blank, though. No one's going to concede that point. Especially at this point in the match. Brent McDougall got two to tie things up with Jamie Murphy after seven. They're playing eight, tied at five. Mark Dacey stole another two on Mike Fleming, and he leads seven to two, playing eight. Okay, and back to our match. We have uh, Graham Power, or sorry, Greg Power, uh, ready to make his shot. We're in the uh, seventh end, all tied at five, and Thompson has the hammer. Shot is on the way. So guard is the call here. They got to get this one over. Looks good. And then they don't want it to uh, over curl, but they could rub off that one and be okay. Stewart doesn't really have much of a choice. He can't access the stones in the house if there's a guard. So he's going to peel these guards. It's unfortunate for Greg that that last shot uh, actually made this double peel possible. So he's going to have one more chance to guard after this and hopefully uh, hopefully makes it. Stewart has to make this peel first. but So this is another one of those shots, Ron, where big weight being played. Try and lose the shooter and the stones at the front of the rings. See the momentum coming out of the hack. Lots of power, and he does take both. The yellow rocks out. The blue stone stayed out front. Um, but I think he had to hit it fairly thick to get that. Rolled the shooter over a little bit. I think Greg will just guard here again. I don't know that he'll, he would never hit those blue stones in the front. There's just too much risk. So just looking about where to put the broom to guard. So at this point, he's playing for one on this end? Yeah, he's playing to steal one. Stewart yeah. has hammer. And Greg uh, is recognizing that, you know, being shot and not a lot of good things that can happen out of hitting the front. One stone remaining per team. He's got to uh, put this guard up. And they did call it a steal of one for uh, Team Thompson in seven. They're up four to three. I'll have to ask what happened with that. That's a little crazy. The Thompsons are well represented in this tournament. So when you hear Team <laughs> Thompson uh, just being referred to, that's in the uh, uh, on the neighboring uh, uh, end, and uh, Team Stewart Thompson's on this end. So yes, two years apart. They used to play together. They went to a junior national together. Stewart and his brother Kendall. That was a nice guard from Greg. It uh, 
does the trick, doesn't it? Guards the situation. So if you're if you're blue pants here, how do you score? You have to raise. You got it all lined up there, Ron. You know what he's going to do? Raise that yellow guard that was just thrown into the blue, into the other blue, and into the yellow. Hopefully get two after this. This is the last shot. And it's a big shot, tie game. So if you make this, you score two. Maybe one if you roll one of them out. So right where Colton's broom is, hit that yellow on the nose. Actually, you probably have to hit it a little low, but we won't get into that. Skip Thompson. So playing this with soft weight. Looks close, real close. And perfectly what a, what a made, shot. that was a wonderful shot. Great uh, two points for Stuart Thompson that uh, was very difficult to see that before he took the shot. And to be able to ricochet off three stones and leave it in scoring position. Pretty good. Pretty, Fantastic Pretty weight. good with board weight, the board weight run back. Yeah, wow. that was actually a one of the shots of Double, the one, shots two, of the uh, of the match so far, I would say. Almost like a triple run back. Yeah, it was a very good shot. And that's good. They get their two points. Um, team Power played that end really well. And uh, you know, you can't you can't defend against everything. And I had that <laughs> a couple months ago my team played. We were we were playing well, feeling good all week, and we played this uh, this young junior team and the skip didn't miss a shot. <laughs> we we were like, What do we do? And you you just Sometimes you can't win if the other skip is going to make shots like that. So really nice one. And um, for Team Power, patience. They've got Hammer in the eighth end. There's three ends remaining, eight, nine, and ten. Both teams have uh, ten and a half minutes on the clock. And uh, you know, Team Power will be looking to get the two back here, tie it up, force in nine, and score two and ten to, to win things. It can be hard to have a good shot like that made against you, but uh, certainly no power stranger to the pressure situations. Certainly Power put himself in good position with, uh, with the defense and, and, the, uh, and some of the blocks that he had up front. It was just a fantastic shot by Stewart to take advantage of it. Time seems to be okay now, where they're both uh, just over uh, 10 minutes. Actually, uh, Team Sula Thompson has picked up some time. So we'll see how this, this uh, pans out for both teams. Again, they're, they're both at 0 and 1. So this is a, uh, this match is a big deal for, for both teams. And um, certainly uh, starting the tournament at 0 and 2, it's a, it's an uphill battle, and one of one uh, still keeps you in the thick of things for the uh, top three that advance. Tournament format is around Robin with uh, eight teams, and the uh, top team goes directly to the finals. Teams two and three will play a semifinal match to uh, advance to the finals. And we're starting the eighth end. Both teams have a rock in play. Yeah, and with the score of two, um, Team Thompson's up, and they're going to play around that center line. So the rock in the rings and the center guard out front. No team power. You've gotten used to this. These, both these teams seem to play a very similar style. When they're down in points, uh, they don't get frustrated. They just put the corner guard up and make the come around. So we're seeing that again here. And this looks like a really good one from Scott Graham. Do they appear to be aggressive teams at this point, or are they just sort of uh, taking what the other team allows them to take? Uh... Yeah, I think a little bit of both. Like, I, I, I admittedly know the Thompson team uh, much better than the power team, and certainly they're, they're aggressive, not scared of rocks in play. They can throw the big weight to clear things up um, and I am getting that impression from the power team as well maybe not so much playing the the big weight shots but uh, certainly you know relying on that touch game with uh, some nice draws and soft weight hits to put stones in good positions and they've been making their shots too 
Yeah, again, execution on both sides has been very good. So Greg Grafius. The, the um, corner guard was removed. Scott uh, Graham made his shot so well that there was no, no way to play at the stone in the rings, the shot stone. So the corner guard was peeled. So this will be, uh, I think, a, a lot more of a defensive end than we've seen all game. We get down to the end, and the team that's up in points tends to play a little more defensive. You don't want to give a chance to give up, you know, a lot of points in the entire game. So you see them play a little defensive, and uh, that's why the reason. Why defensive, Selena? Yeah, will, th will there be a lot of, uh, I, I guess, takeouts? I don't, I'm not sure if that's the proper term. Yep, takeouts, hits, peels, all, they're all. Trying to um, get as much out of, of play as you can? Is that. Uh, yep. yep. And this one, they're going to try and get the one in the rings. Really nice shot Travis Coulter just made there. I took two out, actually. Yeah, both yellows gone. Leaves the guard out front. You're always going to have that when you make the run back. And they're lined up as you do leave the shooter out front. But uh, the good thing for, for Team Thompson is it's a blue stone. So Team Rayfuse saying, or Team, uh, the team with the Rayfuse on it, <laughs> Team Power, says, okay, well, now we got to maybe play around this center line area. So they're trying to hit this front stone, leave the shooter there, maybe make contact with the one in the rings. Just, just, just gets by it. A little unfortunate with that one. So here's an interesting situation. The uh, the yellow out front is a power stone, uh, and Team Thompson has chosen not to remove it. If they removed it, they leave a corner guard. And uh, so this is a little bit of, uh, they'd like to be defensive, but there's a chance to be aggressive and keep the guards out front that are blocking the forefoot area. You don't like the corner guards because that allows the uh, team with last rock to kind of bank points over in the side. But in this case, they're looking for, uh, for a little more protection. Putting this one into the rings, or at least trying to. They're going top eight, top 12. And that one came up short. Uh, Ideally, would they be trying to get in between the power stone and the, uh, yes. the shot rock? Yeah, they're trying to wrap that one around in the top 12. Um, I call it, I, I didn't come up with the term, but I stole it from Colleen Jones, the great Colleen Jones, wor national and world champion, many times over. Um, she calls it Christmas tree because it's almost like you draw uh, the side of a Christmas tree and the, the rocks are ornaments kind of hanging. So you expose one from in behind the next one. They're offset, so they were trying to get it that way. Didn't work, came up short, and I think the ice might be slowing down a bit too. The sweepers thought that was in the rings. So a hit chance here. This is a run back. Actually overswept that one. And what did the oversweeping do? So sweeping will hold a rock straight. And uh, for Graham Weagle, who threw that stone, he would have wanted to keep uh, his shooter out front by hitting more, so almost to the nose of the blue stone and run it back into the shot. And what happened was it just hit it, sweeping held it a bit too wide on that, uh, the left side of the sheet, or now the right side as we're looking at it. And it went over the top, didn't make contact with the shot stone. Here's a, another good effort here from Colton. That one's better, um, better weight, but it actually didn't get the curl that they were looking for. I think it's open for the double. It also appeared to uh, check up a little bit sooner, um, so maybe the ice is slowing down a little bit. Yeah, they're thinking, the um, sweepers are thinking the rocks are going to glide a bit more than they are. That usually happens in a game. We're in the eighth end of a 10-end game, and... The, the ice, it's, it's not a flat surface if you've never been on curling ice. It's not like a hockey rink um, that's flat. Here it gets flooded, so there is a flat surface, but then the, uh, the water gets thrown on via, 
a neat little device that shoots it out in water droplets. And it's called pebbling the ice. And so it's lots of little tiny bits of water that freeze, and so it's bumpy. And the bumps mean there's less friction, which is why these 40-pound stones can glide down them so nicely. Graham Wiggle shot comes into the house. And again, over the top, it's just too bad. They're, uh, they're slightly missing those, although it keeps the shooter over on the side, so it's something to think about. So we're just going to continue to guard. It was really important that Graham stuck that one on the side. Stewart has to be more careful now. If there were no yellow in the rings and in scoring position, he'd be a little less worried about where this rock ends up. But in this case, you really ne do need to prevent access to that four foot stone. So they're gonna go pretty hard to get this one a little bit buried behind the yellow. Could be ice conditions, could be pressure in the time of the match too, that we're seeing a little bit of, uh, a little bit of execution uh, issues in the last few shots. Yeah, not that far off too. It, I think it's probably ice conditions. They, these teams have been through this enough. They're not so worried about the time. And, you know, they have about nine minutes each left and we're on skip stones. So well, that's enough for two more ends. They got to get this one a little bit buried. Looks like a pretty good shot, actually. Second stone, and it is partly tucked under that guard. Um, so see there, that's the Christmas tree effect. You can see a piece of the blues, each in behind uh, the yellow and behind each other. You say you, you borrowed that phrase from the great Colleen Jones. Yeah, have you ever heard of her? <laughs> I have. Is she playing in this tournament? She is. She's in the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. And uh, I think they're one and one. I think they went split their win-losses yesterday. And you can see the name there in the women's standings. I think Colleen uh, obviously has been a national champion and... Uh, I think a world champion as well. Is yep, two-time world champion wow. and uh, world senior champion, actually. Seniors in curling is 50-plus. And, uh, yeah, so with her team, had a pretty pretty good run. Her long-standing team that was uh, owned the early 2000s in the women's curling world. Unbeatable for a long time. Great talent here in uh, Nova Scotia curling. So they were playing the run back on this, uh, just missed, and they haven't been playing poorly this end. Just not getting the rocks in perfect positions. And so now a chance for, uh, on his last, well, there will be one rock remaining. It'll be Greg Powers' last rock, throwing the yellow stones. But Stewart has a chance here to guard the situation and now it's turning into a good steal opportunity. I said they really only needed one good uh, rock in that tucked tight guard position. That one ended in the top eight foot. Um, so now they sit two and they're guarding and, and Greg's gonna be hard pressed to score at this point. They were going hard to get their two points and they really did have to. It's the eighth end. You love to score in these even ends knowing that uh, the last end is also an even end. You think about switching hammer back and forth. You'd like to have hammer in those ends uh, that'll also coincide with being the tenth. Okay. So this one over curled. I think uh, I think there's an opening. An over curled, and Greg can, Greg can see uh, the entirety of that blue shot stone. So. It went from a great steal opportunity if that guard was made to here's a chance for two for Greg. And that's why that one on the side that I mentioned sticking around is important. That's his second point. If that stone wasn't in, this would just be a, a double for a single. But now it's a chance to tie it up. He has to make the double, stick the shooter. Final shot at the eighth end. Crucial time for team power as they're trailing two in the match. Yeah, big chance here. They was given a gift to tie it up. Yeah. 
Yeah, rub the front on. I don't know what happened there. I didn't see it coming down the sheet. It was a little hard from our angle to see what happened there, but I think he did hit the uh, uh, one of the uh, the front rocks there that was uh, outside of the uh, of the 12 foot, and uh, we couldn't really see it as it came in. But it uh, turns out to be a steal for uh, Team Thompson. Yeah, it's a big steal, and that's two points. And with uh, two ends left, a four-point lead, we're going to see some. Hit weights again, like I was saying, the team that's up tends to be very defensive at the end, and that's what was, and it's, it's tough. You have a chance, you, you didn't think you had a chance, and you had a chance, and too bad for Greg missed the shot. I don't know that, I didn't even see what happened. It might have picked. The, um, it seemed like in the eighth end, both teams seemed to struggle a little bit, the ice conditions or, or whatnot. There just seemed to be shots that were just a little bit off that we weren't seeing earlier in the match where the execution was, was fantastic. Now the last time it didn't go uh, Greg Powers away and Stuart Thompson was able to pick up two points in steal. We didn't give you guys an update when it happened, but uh, Mark Dacey uh, defeated Mike Fleming Took eight ends of play, and that was an 8-2 victory. So Dacey is at 2-0, Fleming at 0-2. Dacey defeated McDougal yesterday. Fleming lost to Murphy, and McDougal is facing Murphy right now in a one-point game. McDougal stole in the eighth to lead 6-5 against Jamie Murphy, defending champion. They're over there in the yellow jackets, if I don't... You can see them on the screen there. And then we've still got the Stevens and Kendall Thompson game. That's tied for a piece. Thompson with hammer playing nine. And back in our game. Team Stewart Thompson leading 9-5. And we're in the ninth with power with the hammer. <laughs> I'm uh, doing a bad job paying attention to our sheet. I think that would have been... Uh, a hogged rock there from Team Power. I didn't see what happened. Uh, viewers watching, I'm sure you probably noticed, and I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at the other sheets. Looked like a hogged rock. So what happened was Taylor just peeled out his own stone. When you uh, when you have hammer, or when sorry, when you don't have hammer and you're up in points, um, you can keep things clean. You can actually, and that's why you see he just removed his own stone. They don't need any points. They just need to keep stones out of play at this point. And you really do miss out when you don't make that first guard, that the free guard zone that lets you keep guards in play. After this stone comes to a rest, now guards can be removed. So when you have hammer, you really only do have that one chance to get a good guard. Um, and so now the peel is being called. And so you can see it'll be an open end. Time on the clock doesn't seem to be as much of an issue as it did in earlier ends. No, it's funny how that happens. Teams just play a little faster and uh, make sure that they have enough time at the end of the game. You see some of the players wearing T-shirts. Um, I'm, I'm looking at Colton. Uh, <laughs> Colton walked down the uh, the rink with uh, from Team Stuart Thompson and uh, Colton Steele, and obviously uh, I see Steele uh, Subaru uh, is sponsoring them, or they, you know, they're on the T-shirt. But you see some people with T-shirts, some people you know with zip-up uh, sweaters. What what kind of temperature are you looking at uh, down there? I don't know exactly what it is. It's it's normally about 10 degrees, I think, out in the ice shed. Maybe seven or eight would be. Uh, a cold rink so certainly you could wear a t-shirt there's a few it's usually sweepers that are wearing the t-shirts the skips uh, tend to keep their jackets on it's a little colder when you're not moving around as much Taylor's in a t-shirt too you just he's just got uh, like under armor on some shirt to keep his arms warm but you it's it's warm out there when you are sweeping um, so it's not unheard of to have the t-shirt and then some people are out there and they're sweeping and they freeze anyway. So 
depends on your body a little bit too. I'm surprised with the athleticism of the sweeping too. Uh, you can just see the footwork and uh, uh, trying to avoid other rocks and move around and just you know keeping their balance and the way they're moving. It's um, you know they're much more athletic I think than uh, you would think. Uh, from watching on TV. Sure is, especially when you try and sleep with a sweep with a slider on. Anyone that doesn't curl and tries to uh, you see both the sweepers for Team Power coming back, they both are right-handed, so they both have their sliders on their left foot. Um, but Graham is sweeping on the opposite side. So there's a natural way to sweep with a slider foot, and then there's this unnatural way to sweep with a slider foot. We'll see, uh, see Travis on the right. He's got his slider on, and... They, he and Taylor will follow the rock down the ice, and it's it's not an easy thing to learn to slide or sweep, but you can go fast. You can follow the rock. See, he gets up to speed. Taylor's got two grippers, so he's more of a, the walking style. And Travis is just able to cruise beside the rock. He didn't right. have to sweep. Yeah. That was a miss there from Colton. Threw a bunch of weight and um, threw it tight. So leaves the guard out front. Why is that a miss, Selena? By leaving the guard out front, leaving yours in play, and taking the other ones out when there's nothing in the house? Yeah, you want yours in play, um, but at this point, they don't need any guards. Guards are only helping the team that needs points. So for the team that's up in points, to, to actually leave your shooter out front is a miss. Right, so you're saying that guard will be used by your opposition rather than yourself. Well, it you sure will, points. but I think they're calling a timeout first. So, so they're just going to talk about their own strategy, and they need... They need four points, so you know you think, okay, can we get two here? Maybe three. Uh, I think the team just wants to decide, and, and they don't have a lot of time left either. You see the six minutes there, 5:57 on the clock. It's enough time, but uh, they want to just talk it out and say, okay, so how do we make sure we get two? Maybe three here, have a chance for three. Um, you did get that miss, so if you put another guard out front, you know that Stewart's going to be peeling. They're not really going to take any chances. Um, so you kind of waste a couple of your opponent's rocks and then find uh, after they peel that, you know, once or twice, then you put one in the rings, then the Team Thompson peels the one out front, and then you put another one in the rings, and that's how you get two. But right. you just kind of have to waste a little bit of time and a, a couple rocks. Certainly at a crucial point in the match for Team Power. The risk, of course, is you put up another guard. So you put up the second guard, you put up a high guard in, in hopes that Team Thompson will not be able to remove both with one stone. If you miss this and you bring it in a little too tight and it's very easy to remove both rocks with one stone, then it was a bit of a wasted shot. So that's why the discussion is, do we put it as a guard? Do we put one in the rings? Greg was calling it in the rings. His team said, oh, I think we need a guard. So they, they want to waste you know, one more of Team Thompson's stones. And that's the reason for this call. It looks like a good shot. They just want it to curl. They want it to line up with that blue so that there's no double peel. It was pretty well done. They'll make a go at it here. You can't can't hurt you to try and go for it. And I think this is an out turn, which is, yeah, so it's the opposite uh, turn that most people would assume is being played. But these guys can get it to go so straight. Again, he comes out of the hack aggressively. This is Colton Steele. And he does get the peel. <laughs> take he it. almost took Greg Power out. As he's A lot of power there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those go pretty fast. We, there's um, A lot of teams will measure the speed or the time between hog lines. And it's particularly useful for hits so that you know your team's throwing consistent hit weight. Um, so, for example, a draw, so throwing into the rings. On this ice, it's probably about 14, 15 seconds. It was a little faster yesterday. Um, and then hits, you know, you'll have hits going anywhere from 11 seconds from hog to hog. 10 seconds is more of a control weight. You'll have your normal weight at 9.5, nine, 9 seconds hog to hog. And whatever Colton just threw there, that was probably like 6 and change six seconds to get from hog to hog and that's pretty fast my team doesn't throw six second uh, hits so you kick out with uh, as much force as you can from the hack and then 
to get that extra, I don't know anyone that can actually throw that weight without adding. So you kick out and uh, you're flying. You only, it only takes you, you know, two seconds, two and change to get from the hack to the hog line. And just as you're releasing, you give it an extra push with your arm. And uh, that's what gets you that fast hog to hog time. So the guard put back up. And uh, here's, <laughs> I said Stuart will continue to peel, um, but he likes to prove me wrong. This was another option that uh, I didn't know that he would necessarily go for. Uh, it's a very, Thompson. very aggressive call. But you know you're probably giving up two if you peel the front rock because Greg will draw around. So now Stuart just said, well, now I'm going to draw first. So he's leaving the guard out front. He knows Greg is probably going to get two if he peels. So he says, well, why don't I try to prevent him from getting two by drawing? Now, this one went a little deep, um, but that was the, the thinking behind it. But was he trying maximum to go giving deep? up two anyway. Was he trying to go deep with that? No, he was trying to leave that top four foot buried. And so just a little heavy. So Greg still has a chance. But it's a, it's a measured play for, for Stewart in that case. If you peel, you're probably giving up two. It, you may as well try and the draw to not give up the two. Because to come home playing 10 up two points, you're pretty comfortable. So that's why you can, uh, you can afford to give up two here and not worry too much. I've said the word two a lot in the past uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> Well, Skip Greg Power is down to two ends left, and he's trailing <laughs> by four. Which uh, is two twos. <laughs> Sorry. So his, uh. his best bet is to get a, a few here while he has a hammer and then uh, look for a steal on the 10th uh, end. So very important shots, crucial point of the match, and uh, Skip Power shot is on the way. So looking for a draw. This one's hanging wide. It's just like Stewart's did. We did notice in the last end things seemed to slow down a bit, and so they'd be adjusting their weight, how they throw based on that. Looks, this one's curling more than Stewart's, but it's still deep. So he did not want that one in the back house. Uh, reason being, Stewart can draw down to it. And it looks like an awesome shot when you, you see, oh, it's in the forefoot, and then you realize that it might be available for a hit or a draw to come down to it. So they're asking the front end, can you see it? Can you see the yellow stone? So if, if he can see it, I think Stuart will hit. And you look from the hack because, of course, that's where your rock is delivered from. So if the, the rock you're trying to hit is not visible from the hack, there's a probably a limited chance you can actually get at it. So I think they've adjusted the line. They're just playing the draw. Either way, your max giving up two if you miss your shot. So it really can't hurt. It's personal preference. Probably a good opportunity to get to throw uh, another draw here for Stewart just to get a f another feel for the ice. And it's not even necessarily for this game, Ron. It would be, you know, okay, this afternoon, is the ice going to slow down in the eighth and ninth end, just like it did this morning? Right. So it's 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 also confidence builders for these guys too, playing sure in different is. conditions here. So. So they're waiting for the line on this one, but it looks like it's coming up right to that yellow stone. That's a really nice shot. So that takes the, uh, the two points away. You can see there's no way for Greg to make a shot that scores two. So he's just going to have to draw to the button for a single. Same shot as he just threw. It's kind of cool that you can throw from 100 feet away and put a hunk of granite in a particular place that you 
aimed to. <laughs> the skill level here for the Nova Scotia Provincial uh, Championships is obviously very high. You got that right. They are here for a reason. They play a lot, lots of practice for these teams. Skip Power again at a crucial point and the ninth <laughs> end. He needs this uh, this single point here. Even though he gives up the hammer, he has to put points on the board, or or he's looking at going down. Owens yeah, well, if he hadn't scored here, he'd be down five. So you really do, you know, if you're given the chance to take the point, you have to take it at this point. So they are down three, successfully made, and they will call that handshakes. It's uh, unlikely you're going to score three in the tenth end. So Team Power will concede after nine ends. It'll be a 9-6 victory for Team Thompson. So they'll go to 1-1. One and one. Team Power now is at 0-2. Oh um, that's how quickly things can end there, Ron. So we're going to uh, leave you guys here. Um, thank you for joining us on Bell 5 TV1 at the 2018 Deloitte Tankard here at the Dartmouth Curling Club. You can flip on over to the other broadcast where we've got uh, Jeff and Dan calling the Stevens-Kendall-Thompson game, uh, and that's tied playing nine. So hit, hop on over there, and we'll catch you back for the Scotties this afternoon, uh, where you can choose from Breen versus Arsenault or Brothers versus Jones, or you can check out the live scores at nscurl.com. That's at noon today. Thanks, Ron, for, uh, Thanks for having the me. fun, and we'll catch you guys later. Thank you.